Hello and welcome. I'm Nafe42, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up SSL for uh, Nginx on your TrueNAS scale server. Okay, so I looked at a couple of tutorials and I found that apparently in the credentials part here under certificates, you can create this uh, certificate here, which will actually uh, give you SSH on your website. Now, I do already have, if you go to overtune.com, SSH on this website. As you can see at the top here, connection is secure. So uh, the way I've done it previously is to go into shell, you go uh, cert bot, uh, cert bot, uh, cert only. And then it will create a certificate in here. Um, you basically just pull it into your uh, Docker container for Nginx and it's all good. Um, but what I'm going to try instead this time is to create it through the TrueNest scale system because every time you upgrade your TrueNest scale, it's going to break that section. That part will be severed and you will need to renew the certificate again and put it down, which isn't too hard. Um, but if you can do it the the normal way uh, or do it the TrueNAS scale way, the way they want you to do it, then you can save yourself the effort next time. So if we go through here, uh, so in my software app data, that's where my web server is located. Uh, I do have the cloudflare.ini file, which I was using for that version. So if you don't have the cloudflare.ini file, you might need to go to Cloudflare and get a Cloudflare API credentials, um, which is in this one, it says uh, Cloudflare API credentials used by Serbot. So uh, yeah, I'll just set up now. We'll go Cloudflare, Cloudflare email. So you want to use the email that you used in Cloudflare. Okay, so you put that in, you click the button, and that's all good. So that is the DNS authenticator set up now. Uh, if you was unable to do that part, you might need to go into credentials, local users, and then put the email address that's in there in the root here, uh, just to link it all up nicely. Um, so yeah, if we go to certificates again, certificate signing requests. So the CSR, CSR, Certificate signing requests. You want to keep that the same. Go next, next. You want to change this to where you are. This is the DNS names that you have. So you can use a star as a wildcard. So that would mean that uh, anything behind that on that domain would be um, subject to the CSR or to the uh, certificate. The certificate only works for things in these locations and the wildcard does cover that location. So I uh, don't need to do anything else here, we just save that and we're good. So that's the CSR setup. Now we wanna create an Acme certificate. So we go here and what we'll do here, we wanna do 042 net, wanna accept the terms of services, which basically just is the uh, Acme servers, terms of services, and it will renew the certificate 10 days before the end of the expiry date. So we want to change it from staging directory to production directory. And then you just want to choose Cloudflare for each three of the domains that you've set up. And you click save. And now what it will do is it will create the certificate for these three. Uh, it can take a little while because uh, it does need to go talk to the server, come back and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, while that's happening, what I'll do is I'll show you my Nginx um, script which I use to set up Nginx on this uh, server. Now, when I say script, there probably is a better way of doing it. So this is my Nginx server script on here. Let's big that up a little bit so you can see it a bit better. So what this basically says is we want to do a Docker run. Nginx is the name of the Docker container. Uh, PUID is the user ID. PG ID is the group ID. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much anyway. Uh, well, just keep it at a thousand if you can. And if you can also set your user up in a thousand because then you'll be able to see all this stuff when you go into uh, your, if you put it in a folder that is in your area, um, such as like one of your shares. So if it's on the same share, that's the same user ID that you connect to, then you should be able to see all this stuff. So you just want to put the time zone, Europe, London. Uh, if you're in Europe or 
uh, if you're in the UK. Uh, or, well, just look up any other kind of time zone thing and it will tell you what to put in there. Uh, this is the port, which doesn't actually matter, but I just put these in here for my own reference. Um, so the port 10,080, uh, this is net equals host, which means that it actually is hosted on its uh, on the server itself. So um, once you've hosted it and you've set up all the files and to the initialize Nginx, you want to go into Nginx and change the port that it, it looks for to this port. Uh, if you understand that, that's great. If you don't, I'll show you in a second in anyway what that means. Um, you want to do double dash restart and less stopped. So if you stop the container by saying docker stop this container, it will stop. Um, and then we'll go back here. Oh, to, well, not there. Here, mount tank software app data web server. So that's where my web server is stored on my system. And as you can see, if I go into uh, software, this is my mount for software. You got app data, and then here's all the apps uh, data. As uh, yep, yeah. web server config, and then we got uh, the nginx, the keys, the certificates, and that kind of stuff. You won't be able to see the certificates, but on here, uh, the config, uh, sorry, the config slash certs, this folder is actually uh, connected to etc let's encrypt. So, one thing that we will need to do is find out where exactly it saves these certificates. So, yep, that's just finished now. That's good. So, we'll go into shell. Now, what we want to do is we, we start off, we go to slash etc slash let's encrypt. Oh, <laughs> CD. Let's move into it, shall we? L. Now, this shows us all the files in here and all the different permissions and stuff. Now, if you go into Nginx here, it says site comps. And it says default home system, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I want to set some of these up for internal only. Obviously, I don't want people accessing my home assistant. I don't want people accessing my next cloud. So these are going to be, uh, and my Jellyfin as well, I guess. But yeah, all these things are going to be uh, eventually internal only applications that we'll do for default, I guess. So this is the, the actual website that we were just looking at. So if we go on to here, we can see here this is the default website, the one that I set up, this one, O4Tunet Solutions. Um, and this is being hosted right now by my web server. So it's listening on port 10,080. It is good to go from here. So we want the SSL certificates and we need these files. Okay, so I've spent a lot of time going back and forth around this. Um, I'm going to cut all that part out um, and basically I've managed to get this running now uh, there's a couple of things I had to do I did have to reset the docker uh, container to include an extra folder turns out funnily enough the let's encrypt folder which ha holds the CRT stuff isn't actually the correct place um, but there is a place called keys um, uh, sorry, certificates, which uh, does hold all of the certificates on the server, uh, and that can be made available to the Nginx server. So I'll show you how to do that now. Um, and I'll show you how to do just a couple of these other little things real quick, just to help with um, troubleshooting if you get there uh, yourself. So uh, I'll clear. So we're clear? We're clear now. Um, yeah, so I have Docker. Um, Nginx, uh, sorry, not Nginx, Docker, uh, you can Docker stop Nginx, which stops the container. Uh, and it will say, it will confirm it by confirming the name of the container. It will, by returning the name of the container, even. It, um, you can also start the, the container by going Docker start Nginx. That will do the same thing. That will start the container. Docker restart Nginx will also restart the container, um, which is useful sometimes because sometimes the uh, information loaded into the programs can stay 
and you just want to reboot all of the little processes and stuff that's going on. So it's easy to just do Docker restart nginx. Next up you have Docker logs nginx. Now this will show you a log file of what's going on in the software. So um, especially with the Linux server stuff anyway, which is what this is, um, this one really does show you a lot of information around what you need and it will show you if there's any errors and stuff here which is which there's not as far as i can tell other than that uh geo thing but i don't really care too much about that so that's fine um next up is exec so you can go docker exec minus it nginx and then you want to use bash press enter and now you're inside the nginx docker container so what you can do from here is um well you can see literally what the docker container can see so if you do ls here you're in the root file so as far de deep as you can go as far yeah as, as deep as you can go and you can see the config folder which is the one that you're importing in and you can see I think that's the only one that I'm importing in actually. So if you go cd uh, config, that gets you into the config folder. You can press ls because l doesn't work in here, it's a different system. Um, and you can see uh, all the bits in here. Now, if you wanted to, which is what I, I do want to do, inside uh, certs, which is where we were pulling from the certificates, you can go cd certs. Uh, ls and that lists all the stuff that's in there so you can see here there's one two three four five six seven eight files in there or you can press ls uh, ls l to get the same as l uh, it tells you all the information about that um, <clears throat> the user's name isn't set up correctly as expected because it's a different system so it's fine but yeah that is fine that's okay that way so, but what you want to do now is we want to go back and we want to go into CD keys. So in here is a new file that I have just brought into the system. So if we look at the Docker container, we can see here that now we have modified this to include Etsy certificates and put that into config keys. Uh, and that is the fundamental thing that helped <laughs> get me through this problem. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been racking my brain for probably uh, two hours trying to get this sorted out. Uh, but what we want to do, mate, what we essentially are trying to do here is make it so that with this system, we can go into, oh, I've minimized this down. How do I do that? There we go. We can go into credentials, certificates, <clears throat> and this uh, over here we'll manage all of our certificates and stuff which is good which is what we want to do uh, and the reason why we want to do that is because when we restart the server it will um, it will wipe out everything that you've done to the system in the shell so all your docker containers are going to die they're all going to, well, they potentially could all die. Uh, all of your changes and stuff that you do through here, as it says here, settings changed through the CLI are not written to the configuration database and will be reset on reboot. So you do run the risk of losing a lot of things that you've done just because you've upgraded the system or whatever, that kind of stuff. The cert bot that we was using definitely come uh, definitely would come under that issue so what we've done instead is we have because the for the docker and stuff like that it's a very easy setup so we just copy this line paste it into the shell uh, here and bang we've got nginx set up because all of our app data from this is actually stored here which is on the storage not in a configuration that TrueNice is talking about, not anywhere else, it's stored in our storage, which is something that doesn't get reset 
thank God, every time this uh, this happens. ETC certificates, that's all we need. So from what I was doing earlier, I was trying to find out why this wasn't working correctly. We had the, the files that were there already were the PEMs. So I thought it had to be another PEM. It doesn't have to. Uh, we got the SSL certificate key, and then we got the trusted certificate, which is the same as the certificate. So you can just copy and paste that one across if you so wish. Um, but now we have done that and yeah, in config keys, this file is here. Um, and you can confirm that by going into credentials certificates. And then if you click on 042 net here, it says path ETC certificates. So <laughs> Silly me, should have just downloaded the certificates, uh, not downloaded, should have just looked at the screen and seen, oh, this is where it's storing this. I didn't, but now I have. So if we reload the page, it actually loads as a fully encrypted page. Uh, and it says on here, verified by Cloudflare. It's, it is verified by Cloudflare because it's on a, it's on a proxy basically. So the, um, Cloudflare hides my IP address uh, from direct attack, that kind of stuff. I don't really know if there's anything else to talk about with this. Uh, if you have any questions or need any assistance with that, let me know in the comments below. I have spent ages on this and I feel like I've learned quite a lot from it so far. Um, yeah, I think fundamentally I just didn't know how uh, the cert bot works. And I thought that Nginx was working in a specific way, which it wasn't. It was just a bad setup for some reason, and it was showing me the same errors. But now, yeah, as you as you can see, you can go into Docker uh, logs Nginx, and you can see that there is no no big errors to the bottom here, which shows that it's probably running fine. More to come soon. I'm going to be installing um, some uh, pfSense into a, another server which will be coming in and going into the server case that I've got downstairs. I'll probably have a overhaul of the server case at some point and rearrange all of the shelves and all that kind of stuff. A little fun. Um, but yeah, for now, this is it. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to comment read, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Follow me on Twitter. That's at me for And thanks for watching.